Hi there, I'm Katie Rose and welcome to The Rooted Reinvention, a podcast exploring the real world journey of reinventing who we are without burning out or burning our whole life down. I teach people how to make lasting change by melding my Masters in Neuroscience and my Cognitive Therapy qualification with common self-help tools, spiritual concepts and my personal experience. Because being yourself doesn't need to feel so damn hard. To get more information on podcast episodes, please visit rootedreinvention.com forward slash podcast. Today was a really long day. I could feel the anxiety under my skin by about 9.30 this morning. And I knew that I had to do something about this. Firstly, I limited my caffeine. I am someone who is impacted by caffeine. I know that about myself. I appreciate that's different for everyone. Um, So I alternated between green tea and decaffeinated green or fruit tea. Secondly, I paid attention to my body. So for me today, that meant I made a hot water bottle each time I made a tea and I snuggled up in my blankets while I was working at my desk because I just felt like I needed that extra little bit of comfort and just kind of wasn't feeling particularly warm and knew that that would make me feel more relaxed. My third step was that after working out when dinner would be, which thankfully my husband had already agreed to make, was I went and opened a pack of chocolate biscuits and ate them. It was only half a pack actually, but they were in two separate packets. And then the fourth step was that I drank water until I finished my work, and then I went and put on the Nintendo Switch and I bought myself Ring Fit for my birthday, and therefore I did a workout. So Ring Fit is a game where you exercise to move the story forward. So I think I only did six minutes of actual official exercise, but because you do the warm up and the cool down as part of it, um, it ended up being about 20 minutes of activity, considering the fact that I'd spent the whole day sitting on my chair at my desk doing my day job. Then when it was time for dinner, I went down and did a load of washing up while my husband cooked, and then I went and sat outside and petted the cat. Just sat and stroked the cat for probably three or four minutes, nothing ridiculous, but just knowing that that also has that kind of calming space for myself. And then when I went back up, um, while dinner was still cooking, I journaled, so I I didn't do anything particularly interesting, to be honest. I it, I put the date at the top and then I coloured it in. And then I drew a couple of little um, sort of doodles around the edge about what's happened today to kind of help me process them. But just literally, I drew a picture of a telephone because I've had a lot of phone calls today. Um, I actually drew a picture of a phone with some headphones on it. And the Apple symbol, because I finally distributed my podcast and Apple Podcasts have accepted it and say it's ready. Um, So I kind of, it's a form of almost diary entrying, but it's literally done with three doodles around a pretty version of the date. So there's nothing particularly, if I remember, I will put a picture in the show notes in case you're interested. But having those habits in place they each took me two or three minutes and I did them across the whole day um and again I'm not saying I didn't have any caffeine today because I did I needed I needed my green tea I ate those chocolate biscuits knowing full well that this was not the best option I could pick for myself for my health and then I worked out and I relaxed and I spent time with the cats and drank water and made myself journal even though I didn't feel like it because I know that those things help. And I think one of the things that's so difficult when we're trying to cope with stress, when we're trying to build resilience, is that, again, the self-help realm and also just the medical realm tell us we have to do things a certain way. So I remember 
um, back when I used to work in mental health, suggesting that someone try, you know, a minute of meditation three times a week, two or three times a week. And she told me that she'd, she'd been told by her doctor that she should do 15 minutes every day, no matter what, and if she couldn't carve that out, there was no point trying, which I wholeheartedly disagree with. If we just did an hour of teeth brushing on a Sunday and didn't brush our teeth every day, it would not have the same effect in terms of keeping our mouth healthy. So today what I want to do is just consider the idea of fitting things in where you can and stacking those habits. So a few years ago when I was trying to learn language, while I brushed my teeth, I had the common verbs up on the wall and while I brushed my teeth I would run through a sentence with each word in it in my head so that I was kind of moving towards that goal without almost wasting time. My favourite way of fitting exercise and movement into my day is actually when the kettle is boiling or when I'm washing up. So I will do squats. Again, actually I squat, do squats while and lunges while I brush my teeth. And when I hang out the washing, I will often do a couple of crunches or even kind of, um, they're called inchworms. I'll do like different body weight exercises essentially while I'm doing other chores that will add an extra five to six seconds to that task but I know that across a couple of weeks the amount of exercise I therefore end up doing the amount of movement my body gets um, it, it all adds up essentially the other thing that I wanted to also make a point of today that really helps me when I'm having those stressful days and I'm trying to fit positive habits into my day is the idea of tiny gains so without going into all of the maths of it and the stats and the details, when we get better at something, uh, when we do something positive, when we do something positive, that means we're going to have a gain at the end of it. And if we're getting better by, say, a percentage, um, so you go from 100% to 101%, the next day, you're getting 1% better of 101, not of 100. So you would get better to 102.1 for the third day, as it were. Whereas if we do something that has a negative impact, that is not a gain, it's a loss, actually that 1% from 99 is less than a whole percent. And again, from 98, that loss is actually less than 1% each day, so you end up with 99 point something, and then 99 point something else, and then 98 point something. So actually every time that we have a gain, that gain has a much bigger impact than a loss. Which is really useful when you think about, I'm going to eat a biscuit versus I'm going to go for a run. Obviously the amount of biscuits and the amount of running will have an impact. But thinking about if you've taken a 1% move backwards versus can I outdo this by doing half a percent forwards, the idea of the tiny gains is that across a year, moving backwards, you only lose, I think, 0.3%. Whereas across a year of gains every day, 1% every day, you gain 37% across the year. So the one thing that's really useful to consider is that anything, any action you take, any behaviour you have, actually the positive behaviours will have a more outlasting effect and will add up more than any negatives or any losses that you have will add up. I don't know how much sense this made uh, via voice, um, but if you sign up for my uh, free guide, I think it's the second or third email that's part of like that automated sequence that talks about the six things that can hold us up when we're reinventing ourselves, um, actually goes into this with all the numbers and some links so it makes a bit more sense than just trying to word it. So my question for you to consider is that when you are having a stressful day, what is the one or two tiny gains that you can do. Yeah, you can still have your caffeine and eat your chocolate biscuit, but actually, have you got something else? Could you sort of schedule in that you're going to do two-minute journaling later tonight? Can you 
fit in a one minute meditation using an app on your phone in your lunch hour? Is there somewhere that you can just slot in something to look after yourself? Even if, or especially if, the day is more stressful than you thought it would be. And I know that I have a whole toolkit of those things, which over time I hope to share all of it with you. But what are the things that you know work for you? Because again, we need to tailor all of these tips to you and your life in a way that works in the context of who you are. Feel free to go into the show notes and let me know what your one little tip for coping with stress, one little gain that you can do that just helps keep you moving forward even on those days when it feels so flipping hard. Thanks very much for listening. I hope that if you're having a stressful day that you find a way of uh, making a little gain and if not then I hope tomorrow goes better. Thanks for listening and as always you can find out more at rootedreinvention.com. Take care, remember you are more capable than you often realise and I'll see you next time. Bye!